Haley Jones, the superstar at Stanford, national champion, player of the year, looking very fancy for this program. Thank and, you. And always, always, always positive, Haley. You've always got a smile on your face. You're always working hard. So what does it mean for you to be sort of on this platform and also giving back at the same time? It's, I'm, I'm assuming that this uh, means a lot to you. Yeah, it definitely means a lot being here at a Gatorade event, um, especially this one. I think it's it's weird to be on the other side of things. You know, just a few years ago, I was winning the State Player of the Year award, and then now I get to be on the other side of people that I used to look up to. So being able to interact with the Players of the Year here and um, inspire them as much as I can with the different things I've been through, is it's really special to be here. What do you think the biggest difference is senior you in high school to going into your senior year at Stanford? I think there's a lot of differences. Uh, I think the one that sticks out to me most is just confidence, confidence in all areas of my life, whether it be on the court, off the court, academically in the classroom, whoever I come into contact with. I think I just have a different level of confidence than I did my senior year in high school. Where do you think that confidence sort of uplifted? Because your parents were coaches. You obviously had a lot of success at a young age, but now you've hit just a whole new level. How do you explain that? Um, I think it comes from that same support system that I had back in high school. Um, I think being at Stanford, I've been a part of a new community. So really being able to build my roots within the Stanford community has allowed me to branch out and truly find myself and different interests that I have outside of basketball. So being able to interact with different people and still have that foundation of my family that's only an hour away from me since I'm at Stanford is has all helped in building my confidence over the years. So interests outside of basketball, are we talking about your karaoke talents? Where are we going? I mean, it, there's a large variety. I could go from karaoke talents, I'll whip it up in the kitchen. Um, I think my favorite thing, like in relation to karaoke, is just music and being able to create playlists for my friends and things of the sort. But it's really all over the place. What, what's the number one, if you were walking in right now and you were doing the karaoke, what are you picking? I'm picking um, Senorita by Justin Timberlake, and I'll go start to finish the talking at the beginning to, you know, going crowd to crowd at the end. <laughs> I mean, I mean you're, you're welcome to step into it, Haley, if you're feeling <laughs> it right now. That might be a, a little bit much. What about in the kitchen? I know like that those talents continue to come up too. Cool. You're, are you making like a reduced wine reduction uh, something something over there? I mean, I just turned 21, so now I can, but um, in years past, it's really just been uh, learning from my mom. Uh, she's I, she's a professional chef in my book, so I've, over quarantine, when I was at home, we were able to finally get all of her recipes that she's had over the years or the ones just that come out of her head, and I was able to write them down and compile them all together, so I usually cook from her recipes and then spice it up myself. Uh, I love it. Let, let's go back to the court, and what... I hate to do this too, but I'm asking it. What bothers you most about the way the season ended last year when you think about the UConn game? Yeah, I think it's it's still a tough pill to swallow now, and it still feels very raw. I think it's the hardest thing to do is lose knowing that you didn't play your best individually, but also as a complete unit. So I would be more than fine. Well, not more than fine. I would be able to take it easier if we had lost the game knowing that, you know, we gave it everything we had. We played our best basketball, but knowing that we didn't play our best basketball or anything even close to it, especially coming off how we ended the Pac-12 season is is, is tough. All right. And since you just mentioned the Pac-12, this whole and I'm I'm in Chicago. I grew I went to the University of Iowa, so I'm a Big Ten guy. But this whole UCLA USC thing, uh, it doesn't feel right to me. I mean, you're you're competing. What 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 are your thoughts on this the, the ever changing world of college athletics that you're a part of? Yeah, I think it, it was a decision that shocked everyone. I feel like UCLA and USC just for the four California schools, it's different because that's kind of like the Bay to LA trip that we do every year. Um, I think that they've been pillars of the Pac-12, but um, if they feel they need to join the Big Ten, then that's what they're going to do. But I think it was it was a large shock just because of the history of the Pac-10, them being a part of that, and then staying part of the Pac-12. So it's looking like we might go back to the Pac-10, or I don't really know what's in store in the future. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you, you've got no control over this. I, I get it. Has, has name, image, and likeness made a big difference in your college career in any way, shape, or form? Uh, I think it's made a difference in terms of how I view myself as a businesswoman. Um, 
as an athlete, not really. And neither, I mean, I'm still a student athlete. So, I mean, talking with my mom, I'm not going to get these NIL deals if it doesn't, it starts in the classroom. And I have to keep my grades up to be eligible for basketball. Then I have to perform playing basketball and then these NIL deals will come. So it's kind of third on the list right now, <laughs> but um, it's, it's been an opportunity for me to create my brand and find my audience and find the messages that I want to spread two years earlier than when my livelihood depends on it really. Yeah. Are you tunnel vision with even with everything going on about getting to the WNBA? Uh, yeah, I think tunnel vision for the WNBA, but it's also I want to enjoy my senior year. You know, Stanford's a special place, so I want to enjoy, you know, the relationship relationships that I've created. And I'm never going to be with this group of girls in this capacity ever again. So I want to enjoy my senior year and create those relationships and then continue to, you know, build upon the ones that I've already had. So if I had told you coming in as a freshman that going into your senior year, you'll have been a Pac-12 player of the year, you'll have won a national championship, and that that will be on your resume. Would you do you think you would have been satisfied with with that at that point? Because it almost feels like you you you're, you 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 want more after having experienced it. Yeah, I think coming in my as a freshman, I mean COVID end our season. I wanted to go four for four, right? So then yeah. COVID ends it. So I'm like, all right, I'll take that. That wasn't even my fault. I can't, that's out of my control. And then you win your sophomore year. So then you want to win twice more. So losing last year, it's really not feeling like I've accomplished everything I want to, but you got to leave that in the past and go into this upcoming season. I want to do everything we did last year, having an undefeated regular season, win the Pac-12 tournament. We didn't go undefeated in the preseason, which is always a goal of ours, and then end up on top as I did in my sophomore year. I feel like that would be the best thing to go out on. Um, so that's, that's the mindset going into senior year. The ever-present smile, the pleasant demeanor. Haley, t- just explain to us where it comes from for you, like when you think about where your personality, uh, who gets the most credit, I guess, for helping you develop? It's got to it's gotta go to my parents. I think I'm a good mix. My mom is the fireball of the two, and my dad's the triple C, cool, calm, collected guy. So I think it's a good mix. We're on the court. You'll see me get fired up, but I'm always going to keep a smile on my face, and they've always just instilled that basketball is something that I love to do, so I never try to put too much pressure on myself with it. So when I'm out there, I'm going to be smiling. I love playing basketball. I love my teammates, so I'm going to have fun with it and continue to push through whatever comes my way with a smile on my face. So it's a good mix of the two, but there's still some that fire from my mom. It's just under wraps more so Haley your teammates your friends they're 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 lucky to have you around I love what you bring just let, let's end with Gatorade and, and what your message is to uh the seniors who are you know pulling in awards or the juniors that were looking to strive for it and, and what the award like looking back on it means for you yeah the the Gatorade awards that are here every year um I think it's something that all high school athletes look up to and it's awesome that they want to be looking up to players like Jason Tatum and Candace Parker and Paige Beckers you know and now they're here and they're winning these awards this year so it's kind of you know a salute to them and everything that they've done but I think that the players are here have a mindset where they're always going to want to push for more so they're taking it in stride but now they're like okay I want to carry this on to my collegiate career and those who are winning before their senior year now they want to win for the rest of the time that they have in high school so I think it's you know something great that you could put underneath your belt but it's also a source of motivation why do they call you the basketball whisperer oh i have no that's the first time i've heard that so I really couldn't, i couldn't tell you okay my research it's it, it's it's in there uh, but <laughs> that you're the basketball whisperer and you that you love the underdog which i, I do know. i do love the underdog um i think that's one of the reasons why i chose to go to stanford you know it's it's they're always a final four team in this net but they hadn't won in 29 years so they're an underdog in some senses but not the other um, but they're also an underdog in terms of the media. They're always like, oh, nice girls from Stanford, this and that. You guys are soft. So, like, it's an underdog in multiple senses. So, I- I'm always one to root for the underdog. Hey, it's, there's nothing better when people doubt you and then you climb up and prove them wrong. I, I, I yeah. get it. Haley, great talking with you. Continued success. Do you looking forward to uh, what's coming for you in your senior season and beyond? Thank you so much.